Lawrence here from Unipest. Um, what is happening? Okay, so here's what you're not seeing, but you will if you tune into the uh, stream. We stream live on Facebook, so you might want to you might want to tune in. Uh, are you okay? Are you? Yeah, I'm good. You're, you're good now. I'm you excited. Have, you have the hat on. You fix uh-huh. the hair. You're all good. Uh huh. Okay. Cardinalis is with us. We're going to talk about uh, not my favorite subject. I'm not going to lie. I don't like talking about bugs. I don't like talking about rats. Because I get all icky. Uh-huh. You want to talk about bugs and rats in the restaurants that I treat? Aww. That could be really the pesterons. And then we could go out to lunch afterwards. <laughs> no. Oh, card. Oh, man. Seriously? Seriously? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't. Well, come on. Who do they call when they fail all of their inspections? So at I mean, least- they don't just sit there wanting to lose the business all day long in the middle of the night frantic. I get that phone call. Okay, so let's let's just skim the surface of this because. Okay, names will be named. Oh no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to name names. So, <laughs> so okay, so that's let's... probably the number one conversation. I mean, number one question starter I get when I meet new people though, and they find out they work in pest control. Oh, all the time they're asking me where can I eat, where can I not eat. So usually my personal rule is I'm not going to out any of my customers, obviously. Sure. But I will tell you extremely clean kitchens I've been in that have blown my mind. Uh, one of the cleanest kitchens I've ever been in is actually in Dario's. Oh, Dario's, yeah. Dario's, I, yeah. I love, I love Dario's. Yeah, sometimes from the exterior of the building, it looks like a super old building. You know, you might uh-huh. think it's kind of like another hole-in-the-wall Mexican joint in Southern California. But um, I was there uh, I was there once. I think somebody had called. They were price checking or something like that, you know. But I remember for some reason, uh, I've been in that kitchen twice. Mm-hmm. And it's like spotless every time. They even have like all the shelves you know, away from the walls so they can, like, mop behind them and everything like that. Cleanest kitchen I've ever been in in Santa Clarita so far was Daria's. Here's a good point to to bring up. I want to talk about this a little bit. So um, let's talk about cle- cleanliness versus uh, non-cleanliness. Is there a difference when it comes to pest control? Like, obviously, if you keep, you know, if you keep your kitchen cleaner, you have less of a chance. I may, You know, I'm saying obvious. Maybe it's not. I would think if you keep your kitchen cleaner – and uh you know throw out the garbage and not have a mess in the dumpster and all that kind of stuff you have less of a chance to get pests uh rats or bugs or whatever is that truth or is that myth okay um it used to be much more of a truth than it is now okay okay so let me break this down Basically, it used to be you had to be a dirtbag to get rats, mm-hmm. but then California outlawed the top eight most effective rodenticides for over-the-counter purchase in Lowe's and Home Depot and hardware stores, and so the population has been just booming in Santa Clarita. Okay. And it used to be you really had to be a filthy hoarder, and I don't say filthy hoarder to besmirch people that have you know the actual psychological problem of hoarding, but you used to really have a fil- have to have a filthy environment. I mean, vermin used vermin used to literally be called filth pests. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And um, you used to have to be filthy to get them. Now, no, you don't have to now. Now you just have to have a properly groomed lawn. You know what I'm saying? Because so, uh, well, now okay. So let's same, go back well, same to with this, roaches too, though. Let's go back to this pesticide thing that you just said that we outlawed something. What what did we outlaw? Oh yeah. Um, well, basically in 2015, a bunch of new legislation came down that single feed rodenticides were outlawed in the state of California. And I don't want to get into boring techie details, but basically it used to be you could go and buy decon in uh, the hardware store. If you had rats in your garage, you'd put out the rat bait and then, you know, ultimately you'd get rid of your rat population. And rodent control is kind of this thing that do-it-yourselfers would handle. It wasn't a huge part of the pest control industry's business as much as it is now. You know okay. what I'm saying? But they tested, I believe they tested a bunch of raccoons down in San Diego County or some sort of, you know, uh, animal. I'm pretty sure it was raccoons. And they found, you know, some kind of like four parts per trillion of of, of rat bait in their bloodstream. And they freak out. I mean, they found more <laughs> like dirty diaper adhesive and like, you know, duct tape and stuff like that in their bloodstream. But they didn't outlaw those things. But they outlawed the uh, rodenticides on the consumer side, like what unlicensed people like you or your husband or your friends might go buy if they have rats. And kind of an unintended consequence of that is that a lot of these older communities where there are a lot of do-it-yourselfers, a mm-hmm. lot of original owners, a lot sure. of people that have been there for 20 years, and they're used to thinking, oh, sometimes I get rats in the winter, so I'll go to Home Depot and I'll buy Decon. Well, Decon now no longer has the same active ingredient. Instead of killing a rat in one day, 
it actually takes three days in a row of multiple feeds to kill it. The only problem is most of these active ingredients are anticoagulants. They thin the blood of the rat until its brain hemorrhages. The only problem is ask any of your hemophiliac filiac friends that have problems with thinning blood, if they ever get in a car accident or if they ever get in any kind of medical emergency, they always have to tell the EMT to give them a vitamin K shot so that their body can, you know, coagulate blood and, and stop itself from bleeding out. Well, vitamin K is in almost everything. You know, the roof rats we have here in Santa Clarita are going to eat the oranges off of orange trees. They're going to be eating um, different food and trash that has vitamin K in it. So it starts to reverse the effect of the weakened uh, multiple feed rodenticide before it actually works, which translates into uh, store-bought pesticides being drastically, or store-bought rodenticides being drastically less effective than they were before 2015. So we're actually, okay, so from what I understand, so these, these, uh, these products that you're talking about for do-it-yourselfers, we're actually giving the rats a vaccine is what we're doing. Uh, oh, you know, there is a strong argument that some people suggest that they actually can grow in size off them because rodent bait is 99.5 to 99.9% food. Like it's a bait, it's an attractant. You know what I'm saying? It's You look at these active ingredients and, and sometimes it's as little as 0.1% active ingredient, you know, bromodialone, brotophyacum, uh, diphethylone, different things that you can buy in. So which is worse? I mean, so you have to look at the situation. And as a pest guy, you must look at the situation and go, okay, so which is worse? Like there's a, a, an infestation that might be at some point uncontrollable or the point point two zero, you know, pesticide yeah. in the, the raccoon bloodstream. Like at some point... Well, the other thing is raccoons are... Uh, raccoons are a... They're a urban pest. It's actually considered cruel to catch a raccoon in like a trap and then leave it in the forest because it will most likely die. They completely depend upon humans, and they have ever since they were evolutionarily dependent upon us you know, 10,000 years ago or whatever when they started cohabitating with us. And people don't realize their closest living relative is the North American black bear. When you see a raccoon... You're basically looking at a miniaturized version of the North American black bear that has like semi opposable thumbs and a really bad attitude. <laughs> actually, it's the females that have a bad attitude, especially if they're pregnant. The, the, the male raccoons are actually kind of like potheads. They just like, oh, whatever, man, we're out of here, dude. You so, know what I'm saying? They're like, okay. they're like Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. And let me just say, this could be your pest guy, Cardinalis. <laughs> he not only. He not only can take care of pests, but he can uh, animate the situation as well. Sweet. Um, you can go in and do like a, a little playlet for your customers, um, as you just did just now. What's a playlet? A little playlet. A little play. A little mini play. Oh, okay, See, you cool. Were doing, you were doing the voice of the raccoon, the male raccoon. Oh, that's true. Did the voice of the yeah, female. Yeah, how do we get on this subject? <laughs> we, so, we, because, <laughs> because we always start out talking about rats because I just, and, and here's the thing. I hate talking about rats. Mm. I hate talking about rats. Let me, let me. Well, I don't your neighborhood if... is the worst neighborhood for rats hey, in Santa thanks. Clarita. Hey, no, I'm thanks. just kidding. <laughs> Cardinalis, Unipest, uh, we've got to get it together because there's so many things going on. Right now, is it termite season? What's, what's the deal? What's going on? Yeah, is it's it still termites? rat season and cockroach season. Termite season's coming up, though. I'm super excited because those are really frantic phone calls. Once we get above 77 degrees Fahrenheit, termites can start swarming. So all winter long, they hide out in their colonies, and they're producing these winged versions of termites that are ready to come out when it's 77 degrees. And I'm not kidding you. When they come out in inside of somebody's house i will get the most frantic calls from like these ladies that come home to a house full of these like winged insects flying around it's like the birds on steroids and it's actually kind of fun and i feel like a hero only you would get excited <laughs> about termite seasons cardinalis from unipest uh phone number website please it's unipest.com and the phone number is super easy it's 661 bug 7575 so that's 284 7575 now I feel like there's termites flying around. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I feel like there's stuff crawling on me. 828, Cardinal, always a pleasure. 